Mr. Jacob Blake, how are you doing, sir? Doing fine today. You know. Well, you know, thank you for taking the time out to, to do this interview, um, you know, with Basketball News and uh, Fly TV. There's so much I want to talk to you about. Um, but first, let me just ask you, how, how are you feeling right now? Like, how are, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, right now, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm in a little pain. I had uh, therapy yesterday, so I'm usually down after that. But um, I sat up all night praying, you know, that God uh, give me this opportunity to make this happen, you know. But I'm probably on a at a level five right now, five six, and uh, usually I'm at a ten. You know, that's right. my average number. So, mm -hmm. so you've been you've been in pain. Um, you say you're in pain normally. Um, you know, especially after rehab. Now, talk because I want you know a lot of people don't know you know everything that has transpired since. And we'll get to everything. We'll get to, you know, the details of what happened and, you know, the NBA reaction and, you know, everything else. But first, I just I just want to ask more about how, how you're feeling and what you what what is normal everyday life for you um, now at this point? Um, well, the initial surgery that I got, um, which saved my life, I was told because I actually uh, I was paralyzed from the neck down. Mm. And there was a doctor who had a method that he could try. And, you know, of course, nothing is guaranteed at all. And um, one of the things was that I would be in pain for the rest of my life. Wow. And, um, you know, I don't remember this conversation. This is one of the conversations I don't remember having. And, uh, of course, I said yes. To be honest, if I didn't have kids... I probably would have said no, and I would have died. Um, my my spine, I think, was would have crushed my vertebrae. So I had a set of screws in the bottom of my back, probably about maybe bigger than my pinky, maybe longer than my pinky. They were pretty big. Um, so I actually got those removed back in December, December 20th, uh -huh. um, I had spine surgery. They had to go in from the front, move my intestines to the side so that they could get to my spine from the front. So they put basically a cage around my spine and they slipped like some disc in between it to support everything. And then they closed me up, they turned me over on my side, took the screws out, closed me back up, and they shaved um, some bone off of certain areas, like my uh, tailbone. Um, they they really fixed they fixed me up good. Like I'm a I've always been a firm believer in God, and mm -hmm. he he works a lot different than we think he does. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just make things happen like he sends angels he sends people he he will put that power inside of a doctor right to save a life you know um it's just weird but then uh, back get back to the surgery itself um when they closed it up they closed me up i'm good i healed um still in pain still this almost same amount of pain but without those screws at the bottom of my back, it's not blocking the, um, the, the basically the wavelengths coming from the top of my um, spine coming down and they would hit the screws, which would mm -hmm. basically expo explode the pain. It would just explode and it would be ridiculous. Like I felt like I was going into a wood chipper. I felt like I've been on fire. Um, the pain is just excruciating. But when they took the screws out, it brought me down to maybe a, a seven average. Uh -huh. And I was at a 10 before the surgery. Wow, yeah. wow. So 
you know, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know where you are now. I mean, this, you know, it happened back in 2020 and people remember the talks around what the police did to you, the, you know, the NBA reaction, the sports world reaction, the debates and everything that got what happened after that, the trending topic. Mm -hmm. And then um, people a lot of times don't know the follow up. And that's what I really want to do with this interview is talk about a lot of misconceptions. I've been watching these YouTube videos, as I told you, you know, pretty much all morning. And it's kind of frustrating looking at all those videos, to be honest with you, the different different people weighing in, different people demonizing. And, and we'll get to we'll get to all of that. So let, let's let's start off. Let's start off at the beginning um, on on August 23rd, um, 2020. Uh, the world witnessed um, Kenosha, Wisconsin police shoot you seven times in the back um, after you was breaking up a fight between two women. Uh, your three sons were in the car uh, you were getting into when they shot you. So they witnessed everything. And I, I saw, um, you know, I watched so many YouTube uh, videos, but I saw one where you were saying that you didn't want to be the next George Floyd. Um, and you kept saying it. Talk to me about, you know, what was going on in your mind, um, you know, and what you were thinking about as far as when you talk to your children. I saw one video where you, you said this, I, I don't know if this is going to be the last things that I ever said to my children, you know, after you were shot. Just, just talk to me a little bit about that, if you could. Well, um, when I was still in the car, I, uh, I just looked back and the look on their faces, it was just, um, you know, they were petrified. They've never seen me fight anybody. Um, so that was weird for them as well. And I, I mean, I wasn't fighting, but it looked like it from a child's perspective. Right. I never threw a punch, never kicked anybody, never pulled my knife out and swung it at anybody. Um, but I just when when I got after I got shot, I just tried to tell him, you know, I love you. I love you so much that he's going to be OK, even though I felt like that was a lie. Um, at the end of the day, it wasn't because I'm OK, right. you know, and it, it, it sucks that they had to go through it. But. I feel like it's going to make them even stronger than they were or would have been without this happening. Wow. And, you know, and let me just say at any point during this interview, you feel like you're in pain. Like I'd really, you know, you, you said you're in pain all the time. Um, you say you're at a, at a 10 as far as pain level all the time. So uh, no, well, it, it's, it's come down. If it hits a 10, it's after my therapy the day after. Okay. Yeah, today is weird. I'm not in pain today. And I You're was not hard okay. yesterday. I okay. Walked, um, I had a test. I had to walk for six minutes to see how far I could get. I, I made it pretty far. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Pretty far. And it's okay. kind of funny because um, after the Kyle Rittenhouse case, uh -huh. um, I got an Instagram. So people were messaging, messaging me on there and commenting on my pictures as well. They they would say something like, um, Kyle Rittenhouse walked, but Jacob Blake isn't. Right, right, I'm, right. I've been walking for the last three months. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, I use, yeah, I use a walker. Yes, I have um, braces on my legs, but I mean, who is gonna be able to walk after sitting down that long i gotta build the muscles back up in my legs right you know god could snap his finger he don't even have to snap his fingers he could right. do that and just make me walk but it's i feel like it's a journey that i need to take as well um because if he did it just like that me being human i might not learn from certain things because it's not like I was this super bad guy and I got to go mm -hmm. through this pain. No, it's, it's, it's a me and God thing. You know, it's between me and him. And, right. um, 
I understand why I'm going through this and the things, the challenges that I have in front of me. I know why. And well, uh, that's between me and him. Well, you know, it, let, let, let me, you, you say so much every time that you, that you, you're, you're speaking right now. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I no, 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 no. And I have to just go back. Cause I like, ah, I want to ask you about this. Dang, I want to ask you that. You said that you're, 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 you're walking now, but initially they thought that you were going to be paralyzed. Yeah. And that was the initial, I guess, prognosis from the, from the doctors, the medical doctors all thought you know, well, he's going to be paralyzed. Talk, walk with me through that process. Pro, um, process when they tell you that, and where your mind is wrapping around that new proposed reality for you. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time, <clears throat> excuse me, the first time that I was told that, I was still in Milwaukee. Okay. I was. Um, still pretty drugged up but the first time that i was told that it kind of it triggered in my head i was in chicago i had been transferred downtown chicago to uh shirley ryan speaking to them shout out to them awesome place okay. um but one of my doctors shout out to her she unfortunately was paralyzed and had been paralyzed for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, when she told me like, look, it's a chance that you might not walk. Well, she really said, she didn't say a chance. She said, basically, you're not going to be able to walk. Wow. Um, and f hearing it from somebody that's in a wheelchair, it's kind of heavy. It hit. And all I could think about was my kids running around at the park with my kids and doing things that were taking them on a walk. All of that is just shooting through my head. And I'm just like, no way, I'm not, I can't accept that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't accept it. I may not have told it to express it to them. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not accepting that. But it was just like, a, I couldn't, that was unacceptable to me. It, it sounded so unreal mm -hmm. that I couldn't walk. And I got, I have three biological children and I have two children that look at me as their father. I have raised them from one from three months old and one from a newborn. So mm -hmm. I got five little boys looking up to me. And now that this has happened, I have a lot of people that are looking up to me that say that they find, they can find like strength in me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get into that part yet. Okay. <laughs> I keep doing it. But when they told me that I was not going to walk, it was just something I could not accept, man. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. So there's so much. I'm, my mind is oh, is going so many different directions. There's so much I want to ask you about. Um, but let's, let's, let's go back. Let's talk about, let's slow walk through what actually happened. I'm looking at these videos and different people are weighing in and talk about the legal ramifications and you know what should have happened legally um what didn't happen why they didn't choose to you know um, charge the officers what case they should have made all of that stuff but so let's but let's just let's just walk through what actually happened um i heard the the 911 tape of um someone calling the police you're 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 barbecuing at your children's birthday party um, so let's start right there and then just go from there. Well, I was barbecuing for my son's birthday, of course, but I was barbecuing at home. I lived with them. Okay. I had moved out that summer for a little while, but that's a whole nother story for maybe like a month and a half. I had, uh, moved out, but I that was your home too. Then that was yeah, your I home. Just recently moved back in. Yeah. I had been okay. there with her for almost three years, if okay. not. Uh, three years uh exact but um yeah I, so i was at home i was barbecuing you know i had to be at work at eight o'clock uh that night but um it was just uh, it was like a regular day to me mm -hmm. you know i had never in my wildest dreams you know i was running around doing what i needed to do took my son to walmart 
called my mom and my dad, you know, let them know, let, let them know what I had planned for my son's birthday. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to the museum that day, which I ended up not doing because I'd spent so much time at Walmart. And then my baby mama had been at the car dealership. She had just got a, a new car that day because mm -hmm. our car was in the shop. So I had a rental, the rental that I had, I had for like a week in a couple of days and i planned on getting it for another week okay um but uh it, it's so much to this story um my son turned eight that day mm -hmm. it's just like People don't understand. You don't know when your number is going to get called. Mm -hmm. You know, it can happen at any moment. We go through life stressing about things that you don't, people don't know. Um, and it's crazy because about four years before this happened, I got shot mm. at IHOP in, in Evanston. And you know, I was, I was still living in Wisconsin at that time, but the guy tried to shoot me seven times that day. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's point blank range. It's a whole nother story, but that day I could have, I could have died. Right. You know, and I feel like I didn't catch it. You know, I didn't catch what I caught this time. I was able to sit down and study my Bible and do things that I didn't do before because I just, I had to sit down. I couldn't do nothing else but sit down. Now, hold, let me stop you there. You, you said that twice. So I, I gotta ask you, what do you mean by that? You've referenced something that you, you caught now or a lesson that you've learned or God had to get your, you know what I mean, attention to get you to understand what you, because you said it like maybe two or three times already. What, what do you mean by that? Um, I just, because I'm always running, mm -hmm. you know, I've been a, a at home father at times and I've worked full time at times and I just either, or I just never had time to sit down and study my Bible. Okay. Plus before this, I did not believe in Jesus Christ. So oh, okay. that was another reason why I didn't study my Bible as much because I felt like the new Testament had been, you know, just play with and manipulate it, right. but I did not study. Me being allowed time to study because I, I don't have nothing else to do really. Right. I sit around, listen to my Bible all day, listening to sermons all day, not stop. So mm. I, I've caught things within the last two years that people probably don't realize through a 10 year period. Cause you gotta work, you gotta do all the other things that you gotta do and then you then you find time to sit down and most people don't choose to pick up a bible at that time you know we might choose to have a beer watch a movie right out with some friends you know what i'm saying but that's not what the case was this time i, got I had you. to sit down i had no. to pay attention because when i was laying on that pavement there was absolutely nobody else i could call on so I called on God wow. and at that time when I was on the pavement, I repented for my sins. And that's basically, you know, I meant my sins to, to the Lord. I'm, I, I'm, I apologize, you mm. know, and for me to do that in the name of Jesus, I had to believe him enough, you know what I'm saying, for God to, you know, plus there was people praying. People pray, the prayer works. Mm -hmm. Prayer works, most definitely. Wow, wow! You know, I, it's interesting. I saw um, your interview with Good Morning America uh, with Michael Strahan, and that was it. Was done maybe five months, I think they said after the incident happened, and it was interesting. You know, because the first question um, he asked, or the first question they showed, because I know they edit and stuff like yeah, that. They edited that quite they edited. crazy. I think I was there for an hour, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, they didn't show the hour worth of talking. 
Yeah. So 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 the first question they showed it was that he asked. It appears something to the fact that he asked if you resisted. You didn't resist. I resisted to getting beat on. And what I mean by that is not falling, not letting them put their head on my neck. That's all I was thinking, honestly. This morning. And I thought that was kind of interesting for the first, that to be the first question. I mean, it I mean was that was everybody's question. You know, I didn't resist, though. <laughs> I had my hands up at, at one point. I got shot with by two different officers, you know, with the taser. They had a clear shot. I had my hands up. And that was their chance to arrest me, but they chose to shoot me with a taser instead. So they shot me and I mean, I who you don't just if it don't work, it don't work. I'm not just going to fall because they shot me with it, but my human reaction was to pull it out felt like my eyeballs was gonna fall out you know it's a really pull out the pull out the tasers yeah it's a very yeah. the, when you get shot with a taser it's a, a funny it's a ridiculously feeling a uh, feeling i can't really explain but right. my human reaction was to pull him out okay. and i pulled him out and after after that i was putting a headlock and it just they were trying i feel like they were trying to beat me down they wanted to beat me down to make me submit before they arrested me because I was never given a chance. Why would I fight? I didn't even know I had a warrant out for my arrest. I just right. got back from Las Vegas. But I, I, and I'm still trying to, through all the videos that I've seen, I'm still trying to wrap my mind out of how it escalated from the point of them trying to just give you a command, whatever that command was, to them tasing you and putting you in a headlock and wrestling. Why, why did it jump from there to there because in the videos you you can see the one video where you're standing there like this your hands are up and i i just don't understand how it went from one to the other so quickly i honestly don't know either like it just happened things happen how they happen i don't know why i really can't explain that it wasn't like i was in my head i'm, I'm not going they're not taking me nowhere or something like that no no but they, first, but they were the first point when because i was if i wanted if i knew i had a warrant out and i wanted to run i would have left right when she was making the phone with the phone call i was already in the car right but i'm like i'm not leaving my kids here why would i leave and not take them right there's, there's about to be some bull crap so i got back out the car and that's when i walked into the house I told my son was outside. One of my kids was outside on a bike. I told him, Bear, get in the car. I told him twice, but he looked at me. He could tell I was not playing. Get mm -hmm. in the car, Bear. Mm -hmm. We're leaving. The car was already running, AC running. So he jumps in the car and I go inside, get my other son. He's already crying. I get him, tell him, like, you want to stay here or you want to come with me? I'm going to come with you. Cool. Pick him up. And on my way out, I grabbed my baby too, my my uh, three year old at the time. He had just turned three, mm -hmm. and his mom didn't want me to take him because he was asleep. She was just like, you know, she trying tried to wrestle with me, tried to fight with me to take him, but I didn't fight. I'm just like, take him. You know what? He sleep. You right? Take him. He can stay okay. here. Okay. You know, I didn't argue. I'm happy I didn't. So she took him from me and put him back on the couch. Okay. And that's when I took, uh, you know, I walked out, put my son in the car. Everybody thinks I had three of them, and I'm happy I didn't because a bullet flew th towards the back seat. Oh, wow. Yeah, forensics ain't, didn't tell anybody that because it would have made them look even worse with a bullet flying towards the back seat. I mean, it, we all know bullets rico right. ricochet. Right. Um, so that was a blessing. But as soon as i put him in the car the police were already there i walked out of my house looked at them put my son in the car as soon as i closed the door my hand wasn't even off the handle i felt the arm grab me without looking i snatched my arm away thinking it was my baby mama you know get off me as right. soon as i did that it was like go time i was instantly pushed from the back seat pinned up against my car in between the uh 
rear view mirror and I'm holding on to the car. I'm just like, what are, asking him, what is, what is, what is going on? What is your problem? He right. was just yelling. Everybody's yelling, get, get, you know, they, they did not try to arrest me. Dude instantly got on bull. Um, I know that the things that were said on the 911 call probably made him hyped up or I'm going to go kick this guy's butt. He's a <laughs> sexual offender and this and that. He's got a warrant out. So they came on business. But, but okay, let me, let, me, let me stop. Let me stop there. So, so, but before the initial call was simply because it was like, okay, he, he has our keys. He's not giving back my rental car, something to that effect. Um, you know, can we, he doesn't need to leave the party to take the kids, something like that. And so it sounded like a domestic dispute, yeah. right? So going to a domestic dispute, I'm trying to understand what was the need for all of that that they did for a domestic dispute. No weapons. There was no was need. Pulled. There was no, no need because she's, we've been together 10 years. I've been knowing her for 15 years, pretty much since I was a freshman in high school. Unfortunately, through the 10 years of our relationship, she's called the police on me plenty of times, which they have told you uh, the public every time it was because she was trying to take some car keys. Um, that should have been somewhere in the system where they could have seen that um, because they've come to my house plenty of times and is the the problem has been revol uh, resolved without any type of violence. Right. They've even come, Kenosha has even come within the last uh, three years before this happened, they have come to my house and asked her to leave. Uh, got they you. didn't let that be known. They didn't that tell that part. In the system somewhere. Uh. Um, to be honest, before this happened, you know, I don't love the police, you know, or nothing, but I kind of, I was just telling my mom, like, you know, I think Kenosha police, is, they, they might be good cops. I've been mm. out here for almost three years i've never been stopped right never been harassed well i got harassed one time but it wasn't that bad you know a guy mm -hmm. walked the cop walked up to me i was sitting in my brand new car he was just like yo let me see your id you know what i'm saying I was right like, what i closed my door tried to close my door he swung it back open when he did that i'm just like it's about to be some bull crap let me just right. show my id right he's like yeah you look like somebody familiar we looking for somebody I'm just like, man, I'm not from out here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm talking to him as I'm getting my ID out. You know, I'm not from out here. Woo, woo, woo. He's just like, man, I just want to check. So I give him my ID. He looks at the ID. He's like, nope, it's not you. And that was it. But that, that's regular stuff, unfortunately, that every black man has gone through yeah. with the police. But, yeah, so, but that's nothing, and that's but, mild. That's mild. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so. I don't, and I don't want to say this, so just tell me if I don't need to say this or anything like that, but I don't understand why your baby mother's called the police. That I'll just say it like that. Um, that part in itself, you know, there was no danger, there was no gun, there was no weapon, there was no violence, there was no anything like that. And the way that the police react is as if all of that is present. Right. Every time that police are called in a situation. So it's kind of like calling the police. You know that that's how they respond. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I, I, it's. There was no arguing going on or anything when they arrived. My baby mom was talking to him. The neighbors mm -hmm. had calmed down. Of course, because the police is there. There's not many times that the police arrive and people are still trying to fight. It happens sometimes, but this wasn't the case. The scene was calm. She was talking to him. It wasn't like everybody was trying to plead their case at the same time. The The ruckus began when they got there. When they got there, right. You know what I'm saying? They're supposed to be peace officers. Yeah. When they, they came and escalated everything took it to mm -hmm. a, a level that it didn't need to be at. If you would have came and told me, look, Jacob, you have a warrant. We got to take you. I would have said, what the f right. do I have yeah. a warrant for? Can I just hug my son? Today is his birthday. Can I at least hug him and tell wow. him I'll be back? Because it, <laughs> the warrant, I think, was like $500. 
at the end of the day when she told me she was like five hundred dollar warrant so i got paralyzed for a five hundred dollar warrant wow and they say it was a high risk warrant when i just got back from las vegas got stopped by some cops out there they ran my name let me keep going and honestly after that i was like okay she took care of it thank you and especially me getting on a plane i was like there's no way wow i went so, to vegas like i think july 22nd and mm -hmm. they say the warrant was out july 2nd or something like that mm -hmm. um before this happened i was um i was working doing armed security right the background check was done at the end of june and um of course the warrant wasn't it wasn't put out and everything so i didn't know but mm -hmm. um yeah i was work working carrying a gun at work every night yeah you know it, 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 i saw i saw your expression when I talked to, I referenced the Good Morning America interview with Michael Strahan, um, and I know they edit things out, but yeah. wouldn't it have been helpful for them to include some of the things that you just it said? It would have been very helpful. It would have been very helpful. Did, did you say amazing. that? Did you explain some of this to them? Because they, I didn't hear any of that I in told the interview. Them, I told them so much, and they weren't going to air that because that's not what the people want, what they think the people want to hear. Wow. So the way that the media gets down i mean we know it. it's movies out here there's there's right. a very good movie on netflix i don't know the name of it but it tells the story of how this news reporter just lied to get a big story ended up getting the guy's name dragged through the mud and then when it was found out that she lied she was then dr got drugged through the mud Oh, and I know the movie guys, you're talking about. That's with uh, Jennifer Aniston and then uh, Steve Carell, and um, they're like in the in the media. I know what you're talking about. Um, it's, a, it's a TV series, right? Yeah, a TV it's series. I saw that. That's actually a good show. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. And, Real good show. You know, after watching that, I you know I already knew, but I'm just like, yeah, that's how they get done. That's how they do. You know, it's it's come on. Story, wow. certain stories pay. You know, when I I talked to you before, you told me, you know, when Okay, the, the Good Morning America interview. He's saying, you know, Michael Strahan is saying to you, well, if, if the police come up to me and tell me to stop, um, you know, I'm just gonna stop. Like he, he, he said something to that effect and it looked like he was about to say something and then it cut you off. So when I'm talking to you before, I, you know, I did the follow up with what were you about to say at that point? Well, and back then, how, you know, I couldn't, there's certain things I couldn't say. Okay, I got you. Was a lot well, of well, tell tell the story of why you were going back into your car, you know what I mean, with your children. Because that's the well, part I've that they cut out. Well, I wanted to get in the car because that's where I felt like I could be safe. And I wanted to console my children. Like, they're watching their dad get beat up. They've never seen their dad get beat up, jumped, or anything. Like I said, mm -hmm. they never seen me fight anybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. But the knife, and people were like, oh, how's the hell is knife going to be sentimental? I still got the case for it. it. It was a knife that I could like pull out of the case and it instantly open up. I got it from one of my partners that was working with the company with me. Um, he was a white guy. His name was Jake, Jacob. And you know, we clicked hard. He came to work one day, like I got something for you. He gave me the knife. It was special to me. I don't get, people don't give me stuff like that. Mm. never been the type you know i haven't had a birthday party since i was 11. you know right, right. it's and you know it's nothing that i'm hinder it's not hindering me but when people give me things it's special right so the knife fell out of my pocket at some point and i seen it so i picked it up after they let me go i don't they let me go whatever reason i don't i'm not sure why but when they let me go got my knife i picked it up and i was trying to close it on the video you could kind of see me slap it against my my hip i was trying to close it wasn't closed so when i came around the car door i opened the car door 
I go to throw the knife in, you can see me going forward. Mm -hmm. If I would have came around my my side trying to cut him, I would have sliced my whole entire side open. It was a curved knife like this. It's not a knife you could stab somebody with. Okay. It was very sharp and brand new. So if I would have came across him like that, I would have sliced my whole side open. Oh, I got you. I was throwing the knife in the car. I didn't want them to take it because I'm like, if I, if they, if they pat me down, I got this in my pocket. They're gonna take it. They're not gonna give it back. So I tried to throw it in my car. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know he was behind me. Right. I didn't know he was behind me with a gun. Cause I would have stopped. There was everybody screaming. People just screaming at the top of their lungs. I didn't hear it. Right. They always want to say, "Oh, they're they're they get nervous when people are screaming." Well, what about me? Right. You know, right. and one of their excuses is always the excuse when they shoot somebody, especially if it's somebody that's unarmed, and especially if it's an unarmed black man. They claim that they fear for their life. Right. First of all, you are a police officer. Mm -hmm. You signed up for this. Why are you in fear? Why? Did, mm -hmm. If I call nine one one, I don't want you to send somebody that's going to be afraid. Right. How are you afraid? But you're a police officer. I work armed security. I wasn't. I was making some change, but I signed up for this job. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure these people come here, have fun, and make it home safe. At least make it out of my bar safe. And if somebody was ever too drunk. You're not you're not leaving here like this, especially if you're by yourself. We're mm -hmm. calling you an Uber. And the reason why is because the bar can get fined. Yeah, I'm not getting fined, but one of my jobs is to protect the people in this bar. So for them for a police officer, even Kyle Rittenhouse, he was able to say, I fear for my life. Why are you if you came out here so called trying to be security and and help what and you're afraid you got the gun he has an why ar-15 big gun yeah are you afraid yeah i wasn't afraid i hugged my kids each and every night they knew what my job was they loved it oh, take 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 your time um i can hear you okay yeah no no take your time you know it's 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 just tough seeing where you are and and what you're dealing with now and knowing that it all could have been avoided like this did not have to happen you know i so i i wrote i wrote a book called um police brutality and white supremacy the fight against american traditions that's the name of the book and one of the points i examined was how quickly um police go from a command to firing their weapon in a shoot to kill fashion. And it, it's like, they don't even consider a warning shot, a warning shot in the air, straight up, or or a shot in the leg, or there's right. a million other ways, you know, I didn't go to he, police academy, but- If you look at the video, he could have he could have kicked me in my back. There's he so much. Real, could have gave me one of those, ah, jump in air, how you get? And right in my back i would have flew forward knife would have flew out of my hand and everything there's there's at least 10 different things you could have did at that second other than putting a gun to my back running up you ran you ran after me i didn't even run i was walking he was going away and then right. i was staggering because i had just got beaten up and tased really three times because i got tased by two different officers and they tased me again in the back in the back of my uh truck when i had got moved around because the officer had me in a headlock which they didn't see in in the video and that's when we made it around the car because we went around the car twice the second mm -hmm. time around is when i went to go put the knife in the car you know okay. he was a little shorter than me so i'm kind of dragging him along while i'm trying to get in my car the first time okay and i wasn't gonna go on a high speed chase with my children with your children and that and that's the yeah. part the children so so he I so had, like like look look i had a chance to leave right if i wanted to go on high speed chase i would have went on it by myself before putting all your kids before in the car putting them in the car and so he shot he shot you repeatedly with the kids in the car he's sitting there looking at the kids and shoots 
into a car filled with kids. Like, I, I don't think that point was stressed enough going back to, and this is not anything against, I'm not, you know, trying to, you know, disparage Good Morning America or Michael Strahan, but I think there's certain points that should have been highlighted a little bit more than they were. Yeah. Um, but he did this, shooting this into a car full of children. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm, I don't even know how to wrap my mind around that. You know, it's, it's interesting because and I think I made this analogy in my book. Um, even when wild animals, okay, when they're loose on the street, like you see the, 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 in the news, you see like a bear is loose or a, or a, something like that, an elephant or something like that. And they don't even shoot. Through, they won't shoot through, it. Going they through do the street. everything they, they can possibly do. But, li- but li- they, 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 they have tranquilizer guns. They do all these different things with nets, all these different things with like all these different tactics they go through and they don't ever just start firing, shooting like that. And they are literally an attack. The, the, the animals are literally in attack mode because they're out in the street and they're stomping on stuff. Going on. And, and, and is it amazing that the ask is that they treat black people the way that they treat animals? Worse than they treat animals. No, no, but that they, they don't shoot to kill them. And I never them. even thought about that part. That's that. It just says chills down my spine. That is, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so it, it's it's interesting. So even even if you know, and this is a, and I'm going back to you know the officer. Even if, which is a terrible, like they they should use a tranquilizer gun. They should be able to do a warning shot, a shot like you said, kick you, something like that to subdue you before. And, and so you shoot somebody one time in the back and to, and to a whole room, uh, you know, car full of children because you want them to stop. You feel your fear for your life, which is a completely messed up rationale, but that's what it is. So what is the purpose for the second shot and the third shot and the fourth shot and the fifth Man, shot? I tell you you one thing. all the way to seven. He shot me right here and up here. That was the first two shots. I got shot. This this is where I got shot before when I told you at IHOP, but it's almost identical. But these were b- pretty much flesh wounds. When he shot me that time, I was already yelling stop. Wow. I was. I remember. I remember. I was screaming stop. Screaming. Wow. Screaming. I ain't no punk. Everybody, a lot of people know me. I'm not, I ain't no punk. But stop, please. He didn't stop. He stopped after seven, seven shots. I'm, I'm happy he did. Wow. Luckily, I, I kind of went like this and the bullet hit my arm instead of my face. Wow. You know, and I was in the car already you know, sitting down, he shot me like my bullet holes are kind of on the side. And as he, he's shooting, I'm just getting rocked. I've been shot before, but not like this. Right. And I'm just getting rocked. And I'm screaming for him to stop. I was not drunk. I wasn't high. Right. You know, I've had people hit me up like, Jake, man, you drunk? Oh, no. Nope. I was completely sober. You cannot carry a firearm intoxicated. And I am, that's, that's a very big thing with me because if you, you intoxicated carrying a, a gun, your first instinct is to pull that gun out and shoot. Right. Right. So I've had to take my gun out the holster before. I never right. pointed at nobody, but I took it out the holster one time. It was a really big guy. The guy was at least 400 pounds walking up on me. And when I and it's funny because when I pulled my gun out, he was like, "Oh, I thought it was taser first. I'm like, I don't have a taser. Not, but, but today, but, that, not that day, I didn't. And I told him like, "You're a big dude. I have my gun in my hand because I'm not gonna let you beat me up out here." And I mean, I just I, and you being an armed security person and working as an armed security person, I just I, think I, that I think that Good Morning America should have mentioned that somewhere in yes, their piece. I, that's I all. I, like like it sounds it sounds lame but dude i called the police for a living yeah they should have mentioned that but so 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 let me how have you discussed this 
with your children that were sitting there watching everything? It's a um, it's a delicate situation because you know you just gotta watch what you say with your kids. You don't want to mm. terrify them. Of course, um, they already don't like the police. Mm. My eight year old wanted to be a cop. He's been saying it for the longest. His his choices was a police officer or astronaut. Mm. I'm like, dude, you you're kind of smart. You you got one job, you jumping for the for the stars, and then the other job, you kind of humbling yourself. I like that in you, but he don't he don't even want to be a police officer no more. Mm. They don't like the police. Every time we see them, they're telling me, "Daddy, look, I I'm not afraid of the police. I wasn't then. I had a respect for the police, but I don't now." And I've already been beat up by the police plenty of time. My first time I got beat up by the police, I was 14 years old. Mm. They could have killed me that day. The doctors were saying it's amazing he didn't die. They was laughing at that back then. The police was laughing. They was laughing then when I was laying on the, uh, on the pavement. There they were was laughing? an officer that was trying to save my life, but there were officers that were standing around laughing and cracking jokes. Wow. And you heard all of this. Yeah, you I heard hear. all of it. Wow. There was an officer that was uh, rubbing in the middle of my chest real hard. And that's kind of, that, that's what kept, kept me woke. Because I would have, I, I would have passed out, but he kept okay. doing that. And as he's doing that, I could hear some officers. It was a female officer and a male officer talking and they were, you know. And I know after, after I got shot, my baby mom's because even though she called the police, said what she said, she did not want that to happen. She That's the last thing that she expected. She gotcha. said she just wanted her car keys back. And at the end of the day, she didn't really want it back. She just wanted to take them so that I couldn't go. You could have it, right. Because I had the rental for like a week, I'm telling you. I have, I have a picture uh, the week before, the Sunday before, I, I just so happened to go see all of my family that Sunday that passed and I'm hugging everybody. I think that's why my family was just rocked by this happening. Cause I just, my grandma had just, one of my grandmas died. So I went out there to see everybody, you know, because I had missed the family gathering at the house cause I had to work. So I was right. like, I'm gonna pop up. I'm gonna make it to the funeral and everything, but I never made it. Mm. Wow. So let's 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 go to another thing that I saw with these YouTubes was a lot of demonization of you. Um, a lot of people trying to justify um, what the police did, say what you did wrong, what you you know, and, and you're seeing it over and over again as you're clicking different YouTube. And it's not just Fox News. It's not just yeah. Newsmax. You know what uh, I mean? It, it's uh, it's I, watched, the station. I watched a lot of them myself. What, what did that know, time and time again? I shouldn't do that, but I did it. What, what, what? Th this is like a, a replayed reel that the police officers shoot someone, you know, or kill someone, and then the person who they shot is the person who's put on trial. They don't talk about yeah. the police officer's past and his, you know, things that he did back in the day when or, you know, you know priors that he had. Huh? Our own president was on, uh, was being, had rape allegations out. And he right. got elected. So it's, right. if our president was like that, how do you think these police officers are around? Oh, Drew Drew Peterson. Yeah. How many times did he get beat the case after killing a wife of his? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's police officers all in history that have been caught doing weird stuff to their wives. Right. And then they're they're not they don't they don't never look that as wrong. There, you know, saying this is this is something that bothers me, and, and and the in the neighborhoods, you know, I'm from North Side of Chicago. Okay. Um. So, and I've heard plenty of times over the last ten years because within the last ten years, a lot of children have been killed, innocent. You know, of course, they have nothing to do with the reason why they got shot. Um. So the police officers and everybody be like, oh, we. It, it's up to the neighborhood and people to tell on the police, tell on uh, people who shot, you know, and mm -hmm. they tried to throw shade at us for not telling on these people. Right. But how can you expect us to do that if they're not doing the same thing when there's right. officers that's doing with these wicked things 
and they're not being pointed out. So yeah. if you're not doing the same thing, don't expect for us to do it. Yeah. Plus, it would make the police look 10 times better mm -hmm. if they got all the bad apples out. Yeah, I agree. I, I honestly feel like if they would have held that officer accountable for something, that riot wouldn't have happened. Right, I agree. Those two individuals that got killed would still be here. Mm -hmm. I didn't even die. Why did they have to die? I agree. And the guy that killed him, let y'all let him go. You talking about Rittenhouse? Celebrated that mo the most people, a lot of people in the United States celebrated this man beating a murder. You talking about Kyle Rittenhouse? Yeah. 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 Like I said, I had people jumping on my comments talking about, yeah, saying this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, I made a, a post and I'm just like, y'all take into consideration the people, families that y'all killed. Because mm -hmm. what you guys are saying to me is not bothering me. Right. But it may bother the families. Right. Y'all celebrating this man killing these people only because they were protesting for me. Mm -hmm. So since they're protesting for me, these people are bad too. When at the end of the day, they're not really protesting for me. They mm -hmm. are protesting just because they seen an individual get shot by the police. He has no charges, no criminal charges. You serious? Yeah. And y'all handcuffed him to a bed and he's paralyzed? Yeah. They should expect, they should have expected a riot. They should have been ready that day. Mm. Especially saying the things that they said. They dragged me through the mud. I've been caught raping. I've been caught everything. Right. One, I'm happy my mom, I get my mom is awesome. She raised us good. She, the one thing I had, because I've been made fun of my whole life. I'm from Chicago. Uh -huh. get flamed up I, my mom is something that stuck with me you know who you are mm. you know exactly who you are you're a jacob blake so anything somebody try to say to you call you you know you're not that why get mad wow i mean that's that's an amazing type of mentality to be able to have um and you know when when let's let's talk about so let's talk about the nba reaction um from from the entire incident and you you were i don't think you were conscious for for a lot of it initially but the nba really came to a, a standstill um you know the milwaukee bucks first you know the players to say that they were not going to play um they they said that they were going to go on strike the entire nba kind of joined them um you had other leagues that were also joining them because they saw the video they looked at the case and they said wait a minute somebody has to be held accountable for this you can't right. just shoot somebody seven times in the back in front of their kids in broad daylight and and nothing happened to them um what did it feel to 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 when you came to and wake woke up and you saw what had taken place you know the amount of players from lebron to chris paul to you know Giannis, everybody really pouring in and talking about the injustice that happened. What, what did it mean to you to wake up and see all of that? It still hasn't really sunk in. Mm -hmm. Mainly because I haven't talked about it and I haven't talked to any of the players, I think. So it really hasn't sunk in. I've watched plenty of videos and it's weird. It's weird having, it's weird hearing my name come out their mouth, out of people's mm -hmm. mouths. It's almost like, because if this is how I look at it, Mm -hmm. I'm almost seeing my death with my names on the shirts, people out here protesting, screaming my name. It's it's almost as if I'm watching what would have happened if I died. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a weird feeling. It's, it, I really can't explain it. I love it. And... I haven't had a chance to express my feelings about it. Um, so I'll take the chance now. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. 
because they put their careers on the line, their reputations on the line, everything on the line to speak up. We've seen what happened to uh, Kaepernick. Right. That They did that man so wrong. Mm -hmm. They did that man so wrong. And it's amazing that he wasn't at least offered his job back after this happened, after right. everything shutting down. It's almost as if they fired him for nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did, but that they now they have no reason. What's your reason? You didn't fire everybody else. Right. And it sucks. It sucks because after I've read a lot of comments, I've watched some um, some uh, interviews and stuff. But after reading the story that you made and actually going to find the actual uh, reporting of it, of these people calling the players disgusted and telling them to oh, shut up and dribble. So you're talking about my article. So I didn't even know yeah. that you read, read my article about it before you, you told me. So I, I wrote an article for Basketball News after the incident, and I quoted a lot of NBA players who were making statements on your behalf. But then I quoted a lot of the opposition who were making the statements. So that's what you're, you're referencing. Yes. And I quoted um, I quoted Trump. Um, let me. See, I, I have him here. So I quoted Trump, and he said, and this is all quotes. He said, NBA players um, were very nasty and very dumb for taking a knee during the national anthem. Um, conservative um, political pundit uh, Charlie Kirk, he tweeted, um, these are quotes. He said, it's hilarious to see black NBA players who make millions a year take a knee to try and tell us black people can't succeed in America. Kick them out of the league, done watching the NBA. So this was all in reaction to the players taking a knee while they're in the bubble. Now, this one was a trip, too, though. Um, uh, Mike Ditka. So most people who are yeah, all... Somebody, uh, somebody right. I used to look up to. You used to look up to, right. Everybody yeah, knew yeah, Mike, Mike Ditka. Like, so he back. said, what? he said, and he told this to TMZ Sports, he said, if you can't respect our national anthem, get the hell out of the country. That's the way I feel. Of course, I'm old-fashioned. So I'm only going to say what I feel. And my question to them was how, and I said this in the article, I was like, how is it possible that so many people still don't understand that this has nothing to do with the flag or the veterans? Like, are they just like simply dedicated to misrepresenting, you know, and redirecting the issue? But people are speaking out, players, LeBron, um, Giannis, the Bucks, everybody, the Clippers, the Lakers, we're all taking a knee and, and, and speaking about, their outrage after seeing what happened to you in particular. Do you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't about the flag. It wasn't about the anthem. It, and that's, that's, it's so crazy. They missed it. They, they don't that understand. Way. They don't understand. And that, that's something that is sad. If they don't understand, and that's, it's not about me. It's not about who I was or even who I am. Right, because they don't know you personally. They don't know me personally. Right. And even <laughs> with the stuff that they said, it's not true. Right. I was never right. even, I've never been arrested in Kenosha. Right. I've never been, I've been arrested in Racine, but those, that case was thrown out and they tried to bring that up. Wow. Wow. You know, it's, it's, you know, I, 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 I want to go back to the, you know, on, on, so I, I've done a lot of debates with, um, there, there, there's a there's a, a writer, and he's a brilliant writer. Um, his name is Bill Roden. He wrote Forty Million Dollar Slave. Um, it's a great book. I would always always say I recommend it for every athlete to read. What not to become. But my issue is sometimes you know he kind of lumps all of the current athletes into one bucket, um, and he always makes the point. I've 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 debated him at Georgetown University. I recently. Like may you know, I debated him, debated him against um, at Howard University with Michael Eric Dyson, and one of the things that he says all the time is um, he questions if athletes speaking out or wearing a T-shirt with someone's name or repeating something or something like that, if that's considered activism. Like it, you know, he's like, oh, girl, the athletes of the '60s, they've done this, 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 this. These current athletes, that's kind of like his thing, and I always ask the impacted family members 
or somebody who the athletes have spoken out for what it means to them. And I, I, I interviewed, uh, I do a lot of work with Emerald Garner, who is Eric Garner's daughter. And she said something to me um, that always kind of stuck with me. She said that, you know, imagine every time you turn on the TV, um, you see people justifying why your father deserved to die. And then on the other hand, you hear someone, anyone say, you know what? He didn't deserve to die. And we're going to stand up and say that he didn't. And she was talking about athletes. So she was talking about the, 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 you know, the difference of watching the news. And you have all the people talking about, well, Eric Garner shouldn't have done this. And he shouldn't have done this. And, he should. and you have athletes saying, no, that was not right to treat a human being that way. And we're going to wear a shirt with his name on it. We're going to say his name. We're going to do. And I, it, it's always amazing to me when I hear people discount the value of that. Do you know what I mean? So when you said earlier and you looked at the camera, and you said, thank you to the athletes who spoke out on your behalf. People don't understand how it feels. It's heavy. Yeah. Like explain that. They, they don't understand. It weighs a ton. It, it's one one thing having your friends or family speak up, but when the NBA and MWA all all of the WA stop all the sports mm -hmm. stop in your name, mm -hmm. wow, wow! And for something like that to happen and people not really dig more before they start dragging my name through the mud because I'm not perfect. Nobody is. Right. I never said I was. I never. I, you haven't seen me out here looking for a pity party or trying to explain who I am. It, it, it wasn't really that important to me because I know who I am. My kids know who I am. My friends and family, people who know me, know me. Right. Yeah, it matters a little bit with the public thing only because I don't want nobody trying to do nothing to me and my family. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, I don't care what they think. Because what they think isn't going to make me walk. It's not going to make me sit down. It's not going to make me money. It's not going to keep me alive. It doesn't. It does absolutely nothing for me mm -hmm. to clear my name. It does nothing for, for me to hear them talk. I don't care. Honestly, I was a YouTuber before this. So I was used to how they drag people through the mud. I know yeah. it happens when, especially when something like this happens. It would, you see how they did Floyd? Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this man is dead. Right. God, his video had more time, more substantial evidence that they should not have done that. Right. Right. And they still drug him through the mud. Mm -hmm. Look how the witnesses were reacting. How do you think his family feel? Right. Right. He got a strong family, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have strong families. I would have to say for there not to be a time in history where there was a family, a family member or a friend of the family who went on vigilante mode and started doing killing cops, right. burning stuff down. It's, it hasn't happened. So that right. lets me know that these families are strong enough to not go to evil, evil route, but, you know, remain humble. Right. That's what I decided to do. Right. I can't get mad. Like I'm, I'm not playing. I, I, my blood pressure grow up. I cannot get angry. Mm. And even like, what is it gonna do for me? Right. What is it gonna do for me to be mad? I'm not mad at anybody. Right. Because at the end of the day, I've given my life to Christ, and I mm. feel better than I've ever felt. One of, one of the things I, I keep doing, and, you know, I'm I'm an old retired uh, basketball player now, but uh, one of the things that I keep doing is urging um, NBA players to continue using their voice, um, continue yes. to speak out for family members, uh, speak out for different cases. You know, I, my, my previous book I wrote called We Matter Athletes and Activism, I interviewed a lot of different athletes who are using their voice. And it's interesting. So, I'm you know, the athletes get a lot of hate, you know, both ways. You know, LeBron gets all the hate on earth. Um, but I was looking at what he said after your incident and how it brought all the people who are fans of him um, 
to pay more attention to what happened to you. And that's like power. Like he has it more is, power. power. No, yeah. So so after 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 it happened, it was right after like a um playoff game. What was it? It, it was um game four win over the Trailblazers. This is what LeBron said. He said during an interview, they were interviewing him about the game, but he switched it up and started talking about this. He said, so you're telling me that there was no way to subdue that gentleman or detain him before the firing of guns. You're lying to every African-American, every black person in the community. Um, he said, if you watch the video, there were multiple moments where if they wanted to, they could have tackled him. They could have grabbed him. They could have done that. So why did it have to get to a point where we see the guns firing. His family is there. Uh, you know, the kids are there. It's in broad daylight. And if that video is not being taken by that person across the street, do we know if we ever would even see the video? Nope. And he said, we are scared as black people in America, black men, black women, black kids, we are terrified. So for him, and so when he said that, you saw all of white America, they was like, oh my gosh, like Shut we never dribble. Yeah, it was like uh, like but no, but they were like they were like they never would imagine that LeBron because they put athletes in a different bubble. They put us over here. Like we're not regular black people, so we don't have the issues right, of regular have... black people. And LeBron right. saying he was like, No, no, no. We are terrified right now. Every time something like this happens, we're terrified. And it brings it to light to everyone. So yeah, when he says that, when Giannis talks about how he was emotional and you know broke down crying in front of his teammates when he saw all the stuff that happened, Giannis said that when he reached out to your family while you was while you was in a hospital right after they um they 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 went on their boycott or their strike, he said and he wanted to just say you know we 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 want we want to you know whatever he said like we. We offer our prayers to you. You have our support. We're sorry this happened. Whatever it is that they said, that Giannis broke down in front of his teammates because how much it affected him. So hearing for white America to hear athletes talk about this, it 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 humanizes. You know what I mean? Something that was that, that was only spoke about as spoken about as terms of a case of you know like uh, this this something to debate. And and that's why I really want to always push for athletes to continue to use their voice because it it's yes me. yes it's going to be heard. You have a platform, you have followers, you have fans, so people are going to hear you. Mm -hmm. They're going to listen. They care what you guys think. Some of them, I guess, the fans that throw shade are people who weren't really fans to begin with right those probably the people that just jump on the team because they win it right but um it's a very important thing and i think they should continue doing it especially seeing that they can now they can mm -hmm. do it now you won't lose your career you won't you know you might lose some fans but like i said you lose fans you lose friends behind something like this they shouldn't have been your friend in the first place because to to at the end of the day these people are speaking up because i am a human being not because i am jacob blake not because i not really because i'm black because if mm -hmm. it would have been a white boy that that happened to it would have been a totally different reaction or mm -hmm. they would have threw his threw him through the mud just like they did the, the white guys that got killed at the uh the right uh the mm -hmm. protest i ain't gonna call mm -hmm. them riots right people, right people have called me about that i don't condone the violence but you have to understand when people are not being heard this is what they do they're enraged because mm -hmm. this could happen to any one of them or their family right or their friends who's next this summer is that's all i can think about who's next right and yes people die all the time but if it's in the hands of the police, the people who we call, mm -hmm. it's not just black America. It's white America is, is afraid to. Definitely. It's white it's America it. is afraid to. I've had conversations with friends of mine. I got some friends here now. I got friends. Nobody likes the police now. And it's been like that for a while. It wasn't just because of what happened to me. People get afraid when the police come around. 
and, and, and for and for good reason. I mean, if you have when you talk about, you know, qualified immunity and people understand what that means, that means that, you know, that there are going to be no repercussions for you for anything that you do. So if you're a police officer, you know, you're not going to be punished for it. You don't you don't hesitate. Like, why? Why even think about if why you even think somebody, about it? Yeah. yeah, you know, you're not going to be punished for it. Exactly. Why? Why hesitate? You know what right. I'm saying? And there are laws put in place to protect police officers. Mm -hmm. It's qualified and immunity. Honestly, all they have to say is that they were afraid. That's it. And like I said, that should not be something that's used as an excuse because why are you even signed up? I don't think that if you interview somebody who's out in Iraq, if you interview them, they're not going to tell you that they're afraid. That's why they right. shoot. Right. That's a good point. That should yeah. not be acceptable. That's a good point. Why are you a police officer if you are afraid? Because you could give anybody a gun. You can give anybody a gun. Yeah. And and if you're you if you're a afraid gun, a badge, a, a car with lights on it, and you give them that power. Yeah. And they know that they can do this. It's killing season. Yeah. I mean, it's been happening. We fighting the same problems that we was fighting sixty years ago. Mm -hmm. It's just that we're fighting it differently. Right. Well, I, th I think that one of the things that, that people are frustrating with is that you see a lot of the same rules and the laws um, still put on put in place from American slavery um, as dealing specifically with, with us um, still carried on and still being being utilized. Um, one of them being um, the way that the, the police are even formulated uh, from back from 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 when they first started as slave patrol. Um, so I think it's a little bit. It's a little bit tough, um, but I think people need to understand how history is implemented in the present. And that's where you see a lot of different um, debates about critical race theory, where people don't want to be able to learn the stuff that happened in the before, because they're gonna be studying Jacob Blake case years from now. Yeah. And it's gonna be used as a precedent. So you gotta be able to look at it and say, listen, this is why we need this law change because in this case this officer was not even held accountable he was not charged but there was no way that he needed to be able to shoot this man seven times in the back when there was no imminent threat and we need to use that part of history to be able to change a new law so that's exactly. what's kind of missing a lot of times what happened when people review history they don't look at it as saying okay this happened here we can't do the same thing that happened back here and have the same thing in place right here and that's one of the parts that that is so frustrating sometimes. But I want to ask you this. I want to ask you, and I know I want, you're so generous with your time. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, you know, I could. There's so much I. Now we can. Hey, this don't have to be the last one either. Okay, cool. We could do. We could do a whole other one. But I want to ask you about your, your, you know, your brother, um, Paulie, and the foundation, and the work that you. I know you're a little bit more of the face of the foundation, but the work that y'all are doing as a family, because impacted family members after their thrust into this this mode of trying to figure out how what happened to their loved one doesn't continue happening to other people they put together different initiatives foundations and so i definitely want to give um some time to shed some light on what you all are doing i um sat on a panel with your brother um a few days ago and it was an amazing panel there was other impacted family members there there was a uh, kenneth chamberlain jr if people remember what happened to his father, um, they actually made a whole movie about it, the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. And then also um, Alicia Charles Finley, who was the brother of Botham John. And then, so we connected with Ben and Jerry, who was Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And we're trying to push, we're trying to push for them to end qualified immunity and we're going state to state. So this first one is in New York. And we even got a retired police officer who I interviewed for my book right here in uh, from right here in Montgomery County in Maryland, um, Captain Sonia Pruitt. And so she's talking about it as well of how important it is to end qualified immunity because if you have it, then that basically gives the police a license to do whatever they want to do. Kill, shoot, maim, beat, shoot somebody seven times in the back and get away with it. But your brother spoke real passionately about wanting to change things. And he spoke about utilizing athletes' voice to be able to push for that change. But talk about everything that y'all are doing with edify and um how you want to really push for a changing and how not only in how we police but just the country as a whole yeah um it's in place to bring athletes into the circle or whatever 
they want to help on if it's um you know helping with pollution if it's helping with the policing we just want to provide a place for them if they want to be involved for them to come you know you got a place we'll put you where we need you and it's very important because other than the music industry sports players are next up to bat when it comes to people looking up to them mm -hmm. um so getting them involved with this is very important and i feel like a lot of players don't get involved because they don't know where to how to get involved or where to go and start so that's why this is in place and it's a place for y'all to come and help and uh he's running things um he's doing an awesome job he's my big brother yeah we the same age but he's older mm -hmm. um and it hurt it hurt it hurt for this to happen and instead of him being angry and doing something reckless he chose to do this and it could be because of how i handled it and how i took it you know i chose not to go left i went right you know it's a place for um uh, uh players and and not just players if, if some a regular person wants mm -hmm. to come have, get involved and they go through edify we're not just we're not going to tell you no mm -hmm. we're going to place you where you need to be placed and it, it it's very important for something like this to be available definitely i, I, I encourage I, I do it sorry for cutting you i encourage players to do it get involved you have absolutely no reason to be afraid now mm -hmm. do definitely. It. definitely um i know i said last question one last question i want to ask you because i do want to ask you about this one um you talked to me about we were talking about gofundmes mm -hmm. and how you know you know sometimes people one of the things that I always saw, you know, and I know sometimes when you deal with money with organizations, it gets sticky and you have situations and stuff like that and people are hesitant. But I used to have an issue with always seeing after a police officer killed someone um, that there would be GoFundMes for them, that police officer, after they were only put on paid administrative leave, so which is a paid vacation. So they're not losing no money. But yeah. they get a GoFundMe and get all this money raised. I mean, I see that all I've never time, seen and time that. again. That's remarkable. That's it's it's, it's it's amazing in a disgusting way. Um, but but the GoFundMe that and I even put the GoFundMe in the article that you referenced earlier that I wrote two years ago. Your GoFundMe, and I wanted to you to tell the people um, how your GoFundMe went, how it helped you, and um, you know how much it is needed when these things do happen and it's important for the families to actually get the money. That's, you know, hundred percent, right, yeah. but, but talk about how, how much that, that GoFundMe um, that you had actually helped you. Okay. Um, I will, one thing I will say that there's been a lot of money donated that has not reached me. And I don't want to say it like I'm money hungry, but people need to know, um, the best mm -hmm. way if you want to donate is to do it through the GoFundMe. Don't give your money to nobody thinking they're going to bring it to me because they haven't and they're not. Um, mm -hmm. The GoFundMe has most definitely helped me and my family. Um, and it's not like it's helping us pay our bills because we don't want to work. Everybody in my family has worked. We are actually, it, it's, it's, it's something that needs to change, but we are one of those families that don't like to really be like oh so and so help me because they like to throw you under the bus mm, mm. but one thing that has changed since that is how we feel about that because we have come to the point where we realize we do need people's help and we will accept it um it has helped me buy medical supplies everything from medical supplies to paying people to help me help you yeah I, it, it has helped for, for everybody i've had to pay people to help and i mean people have bills like you're gonna stay you're gonna leave your job to come help me yes i'm going to pay you and um it has bought everything my my kids when i when i left i didn't have anything i didn't have all my property was locked inside of our house they changed the locks on us so none of us had anything me and my kids five kids 
and their mom. We didn't have anything for her. They didn't give her access to that to that property almost a year later. So it has helped us as kept a roof over their head. I've, and for people that have, are asking about what about his baby mama, what about his baby mama, I've been taking care of her and my children with mm -hmm. this money. I'm not somebody that is going out. And, I can't ride. I can't go kick it if I wanted to. I'm not out here buying stuff that I don't need. I don't have a car sitting outside on 32s. You know what I'm saying? I'm not blowing you guys' money. It is a very important asset that we need. We needed it. We needed it. I don't talk, know where I would be if I didn't have it. Talk about the medical expenses that you that you told me oh, about. Man. Right. It's ridiculous. I, I, you know, I've never really had any medical issues. So it was like, whoa, I did not know that it costs this much to be taken care of. And it's, it's actually ridiculous. But the GoFundMe has helped with all of that. Um, I've had to buy machines to help me. Um, like I had to get a replacement van. Um, I was donated a van and something happened to the ramp the gofundme helped me buy a new van um like it has helped it has helped it is and it's there and i i want people to be encouraged when this happens if you got a little bit to donate donate it because people need it people mm -hmm. need it and, it, and it, it blew my mind when i i actually i took the time when i started feeling better to actually go look at the gofundme myself and it's just a beautiful thing to see 70,000 people, over 70,000 people in their heart. God, I tell you, God does things crazy. He could have put a million dollars on my bank account. He could have put a million dollars at my doorstep. But instead, he chose to send people to go donate for me. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I don't care if you donated five dollars, one dollar. It has helped. Mm. It has helped. My my first uh, hospital bill was over a million dollars. Oh wow! Really? Oh, the helicopter ride wasn't cheap. Oh wow! Yeah. See, a lot of people don't know these that that you get a bill for every single thing that has happened after this. Yeah. I was more, so you more said more. your first your first hospital bill was a million dollars. It was over a million. Wow, over a million, I believe. Wow. Oh, it cost a lot. They they put me back together. My spine was broken in two different places. I got shot, you like so they had my spine was in one, two, three pieces. Three pieces. Wow. Goodness gracious. Five of the bullets that hit me hit me in places that it should have killed me. Wow. Look at I God. I got hit in my one shot through my intestines, ripped through my one shot through my stomach, my spine, two hit my spine. I got two bullets in me, and then I got fragments by my spine that they couldn't take out. Um, wow. Fortunately, I didn't have to have a, uh, I think it's called a colostomy bag or something like that. Right. Um, I'm able to use the bathroom. Right. You know. And these are things that after, over time that my body developed and I'm getting back, you know, the I'm getting the ability to do these things that they said I would never be able to do again. Wow. Wow. And I didn't accept that, man. I didn't accept it. I, I pray God is real. So I definitely any and everybody to go that route. And sometimes people just need to learn their own way you know mm -hmm. they got to go through it themselves but there's a lot of people out here that are trying to figure out how i get through my day to day mm -hmm. i pray to god pray to jesus christ i have i have humbled myself to the point where i understand i mean it, it's it's common sense we when we first begin we are in our fathers um you know the sac and we are sperm cells a sperm cell is a microscopic worm mm -hmm. so we start off as worms and we grow up thinking that we're just hot ish you know we got people working out you got these girls getting their body done and mm -hmm. people just have 
forgotten that's what we come from humble yourself humble yourself wow and it takes it took him i had to humble myself my pride my dignity <laughs> that don't exist no more and i'm fine i'm fine with that i had really? another thing that i had to accept that i am no longer in control of anything that happens to me well you know it's 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 a blessing that god kept you the way that he kept you i mean Amen. you're talking about the 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 so by all intents purposes you're not supposed to even be here right now to be shot seven times where the bullets went through how they five went. of the bullets ethan should have killed me and people are out here dying with one bullet with one bullet and god bullet. kept you so i mean yeah we we're definitely gonna have to do a part two because there's so yeah, much more we got to talk about but um i i just want to say keep keep you you know in, encouraged um you know the work that you're trying to do now especially with edify to try to help other people um you know and and and, and the you, you have your mother that has been such a blessing to you you know throughout this entire process to, to the help you the time since the beginning time, of your time and that is that is an absolute blessing so i, I just want to keep you she, she has been a single mother she raised me and my two two sisters by herself and right. here she is again at the age of 30 taking care of me again 30 years later you know i got mm -hmm. my lady helping you know what i'm saying a couple family members but all in all it's my it's my girl my mom and one of my sisters that's a blessing to have that network of yeah. help you know yeah. what i mean definitely it so is. hey i'm not gonna keep you it's, it's been over an hour and a half but i know you said you was in pain even in the beginning but we're gonna do a hey, part i'm feeling two good now but look i i did <laughs> i had company this whole time um i got some of my, my guys came down from wisconsin to okay with me um shout out to them okay oh, yeah, and something else i wanted to do before we get off just in case all right um, they they do watch because it's, it is a very important thing that people need to accept and understand uh -huh. health care mm. health care mm. thank you mm. everybody down to the people who just push people around to the people mm -hmm. doing the surgery mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. i wish they got paid more because they deserve it especially wow. through the pandemic they deserve it wow these people should be taken care of thank you Wow. You guys saved my life, and I promise that I'm gonna I'm gonna do good with it. I'm not gonna treat it bad. I promise wow. you. Wow, so, so you're so blessed. It's just it's just amazing. So I I know I can't say no. Yeah, we're gonna do a part two to this because we yeah, have a lot more that we gotta discuss. But I'm gonna just say, hey, I'll I'll let you get to it. Thanks for taking the time. Um, and you you, you know what? You know, just just continue to be a blessing. To other people you said it earlier you said that people you know um reach out to you and they say that they find strength in you and uh, uh, that's probably weird to kind of hear you know what i mean but it your is. story it's so inspirational that you are even you know what i mean alive right it now it's a, mir you're, I'm a miracle uh, a complete miracle and i'm no, not no saying doubt. that to be big-headed but i need no 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 you're a miracle that yeah. this was not jacob blake's strength right this was this is the strength of god and right. if you're feeding off of my strength you're feeding off of god and you don't wow. know that. so wow. i encourage y'all to do that and Definitely. reach out to me i'm not i don't take i don't people tell me i'm a celebrity no i'm not right god kept me here not just for my children not just for me but he kept me here for everybody if you need some advice you need me to help you be uplifted i'm here and i got you I don't what, what's, the, what's the best way for somebody to reach out to you? Like. What's the best way? Do you have a website or somebody? The best Instagram, way for somebody to reach you? Instagram or my Facebook. I got Facebook. My name is Can You Dig It. Um, my Instagram is Jake Lalo Blake, all one. You know what I'm saying? That's probably the best ways to get to me. I get my phone yeah. number out, but now let, let it go to social media. media. Yeah, yeah let's just do that. But um, right. I did think about getting a cell phone that was just for that. So if okay. I do, which I, I think it would be a good thing for me to do, I'm going to post that number and that would be a, a way for people to get in contact with me as well. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, you be blessed and we'll, we'll, we'll have part two here soon. But hey, stay stay being a blessing to yourself, to your uh, to people Thank around you. Thank you, Ethan, because what you're doing 
it matters. So I appreciate you continue it. Continue to do it, and you stay blessed, bro. I Thank appreciate you for this appreciate opportunity, it. and we're gonna do it again. We're gonna definitely, do it again. definitely, definitely. All right, bless, Love. bless.